Okay, uh, given that I can't be with you in the lecture slot uh, this coming week, as I mentioned, um, what I thought is rather than delay me being able to teach you this material, um, I'd create a short uh, video lecture for you to review. Um, so that if you want to start thinking about how you might apply uh, what I'm going to talk about today um, into your aircraft design, you can get going with it. Um, now, having chatted to, to to, to most groups over the past few days, um, it's becoming clear, and hopefully you're realizing this, that the, the stage of design you're in now, the detail design phase, is essentially a complex optimization problem. You've got lots of different uh, competing factors that are affecting the design of your aircraft, and what you're trying to find as designers is the happy compromise between those factors. Um, I'm, I'm going to introduce you to a tool um, which is embedded with inside MATLAB. Um, it's essentially a statistical tool for trying to establish what, if, if you can parameterize your design, and I'll explain what that means in just a moment, um, how you can in a relatively simple way identify what optimum, what the optimum combination of those parameters is um, in a design problem. The philosophy of this is called design of experiments, and then we specifically use a tool called response surface modeling um, and again there are tools for these within MATLAB which will be the second part um, of this video lecture. So first of all what do I mean by uh, parameterization? So if you can parameterize a design essentially what that means is that you can say that my design or an aspect of my design is some function of uh, a bunch of numbers. So if you can specify your design using a series of numbers or parameters, we've said that we've parameterized the design. So those numbers could be, for example, if you were designing a wing, the, those parameters could be the root chord, the tip chord, the semi-span, and so on. If you're looking more specifically at for example, a you know a typical NACA aerofoil, we know that there's this could be described using a, a NACA code, a four-digit NACA code, and these numbers basically define that shape. So a NACA aerofoil is by definition a parameterized design. There are a set of numbers that describe things like the camber, the position of maximum thickness, the percentage or the thickness percentage of the aerofoil. So if so, some of you have lots of data at the moment, and you might not have actually made your final decision on what that, what your wing uh, airfoil cross section is going to be, and you and you're, you know you've you've narrowed it down to a, a, a selection of airfoil cross sections, and you want to make sure now in a more robust way than you've been able to so far that what you have is the best design. But you could apply this to, to any aspect of your aircraft design. So you could have, for example, if you were optimizing the structure, uh, one, of the, one of the things you might be trying to figure out at the moment is what's the optimum number of spars. That could just sim simply be a number. Um, you know, the, the number of spars is one of the parameters that defines your aircraft structure. And the thing you're trying to optimize is you're trying to minimize the maximum stress in your structure. Um, whilst also trying to minimize the weight of the structure, for example. That's a classic um, optimization problem for a structural designer. Now, so these are the kind of problems we can solve uh, using this approach. Um, but for me to be able to explain this, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk here um, in the context of a two-parameter problem. So if you can reduce the problem you're trying to solve down to two parameters. So if you were designing an airfoil, you could decide, right, I'm going to fix uh, the camber, for example, and the two parameters I'm going to play with in my optimization problem are the thickness percentage of the airfoil and the position of that maximum thickness on the airfoil. Um, but these could be any two parameters. And essentially what you do then as the designer is you say, well, what I've got to do next is construct a design space where we've got parameter 1, phi 1, parameter 2, phi 2, and we'll call this the design space of our problem. 
and I'll say okay I know that there's a minimum value of parameter 1 phi 1 min and a maximum value of phi 1 that I'm going to allow now often that could be there's a geometric constraint for example on this parameter there's a maximum thickness you're allowed for practical reasons uh, and if you're the aerodynamicist your structural guy might have said to you that the, the uh, the, the minimum thickness I'll allow you to have on your aerofoil is this and that defines what we would call the constraints on the problem the, the outer boundaries of our design space uh, similarly we can place minimum and maximum values now if there are no obvious geometric or uh, other reasons for placing these constraints you might just have to make an educated guess on what would be a sensible range over which to allow the parameters to vary. Now I'm explaining this because when you're working on a 2D space two parameters is about as easy as it is for me to draw but this this principle extends to any number of parameters that you might have. And now what we've done is we've constructed the constraint around our design space and we say okay my design has to live somewhere inside this space here. This is the design space of my problem. Now usually when you're using experiments, whether they be real physical experiments or as is what is more often the case now in aerospace design, a computer model experiment, so, so how good your design is might be a function of, or the prediction of how good your design is might be a function of running a uh, a finite element stress analysis or running a CFD model to get a lift drag coefficient um, and usually you can only do that at discrete points within this d design space so for given values of these parameters so I know some of you have used some tools like the vortex lattice method on particular airfoil shapes to get lift drag values for, dis for for specific values of phi 1 and phi 2. And essentially what, what design of experiments says, tells you is where is the most efficient, where are the most efficient points to sample this design space? Um, and it turns out that just doing a uniform sampling like this usually isn't the most efficient to statistically capture what's going on with it within this design space. Now one of the tools that's often used, one of the, the statistical sampling techniques to sample a design space like this, whether it be a two-dimensional design space or a high-dimensional design space, is, is what's called Latin hypercube sampling. Now I'm not going to explain how that works because you can go away and look that up. It's often the acronym for this is often LHS but basically all LHS is doing is saying okay given the parameters you've got in your problem the minimum and maximum values you're going to allow those parameters to go to what's the most effective way of sampling this design space because each of these in the context of aerodynamics modeling might represent a CFD run which as you're aware has an expense that goes along with it in terms of time and in terms of computer cost. So usually we're, as a designer you'd be restricted on the number of samples of that design space that you are allowed and what Latin hypercube sampling does is say okay if you've got the time um, or you can afford to run 20 CFD runs where within that design space should you do those runs so at what values of phi 1 and phi 2 should you do those runs to get the maximum amount of information understanding of that design space back so that's what part one of this is des design of experiments it's how do you effectively choose the parameters at which to run experiments and then the second part of that is once you've got your data back the second thing we do is try and statistically interpret that data um, and the simplest way of doing that um, and it's a tool embedded within MATLAB is called response surface modeling so if you imagine now you've used the design of experiments approach to sample your design space um, 
So at discrete values of phi 1, phi 2, you've got solutions. Okay, so you might have, say, 10 different solutions from within this design space. So these might be CFD runs where you've got the lift to drag ratio of your wing or your aircraft at different values of phi 1 and phi 2. Phi 1 might be, let's imagine phi 1 is uh, wingspan. Phi 2 is, let's say, mean aerodynamic chord. Okay, And the thing that you've measured, in your case, the thing you want to maximize is the lift to drag ratio. So each of these values, phi 1 and phi 2, you have got a value for the lift to drag ratio of your aircraft. And what response surface modeling does is say, well, OK, let's try lots of different functions and see which one of those functions best matches that data set. So can we come up with a function that if we were trying to fit, so in this case, in a two-dimensional case, we'd be trying to fit a surface to this data. OK, this is my attempt at representing a surface. So if this is some analytical function, of phi 1 and phi 2, what, what's the best function to represent the data we've got? And we call this response surface modeling. And how does that help us optimize? Well, if we understand what this function looks like, and we've got an analytical solution for this function, well, it's very easy then to find a minimum or a maximum of this function. Um, to give us or predict uh, what values of phi 1 and phi 2 within our design space will give us the thing that in this case we're trying to maximize. So for example, in this case here, you could use an optimizer to say where's the maximum value of this function because I want to maximize the lift-drag ratio and that might be up in this top corner up here. Now we didn't actually ever do a CFD run up in this top corner up here. We don't actually have any CFD data but our response surface model is predicting that that's where we should go into that top corner. So what we could do then is say, okay, well let's do a run. Let's let's let's. This is where the response surface model is predicting I'm going to have my maximum lift drag ratio. So let's try it out. 